Hello and welcome to Inside Healthcare. Memorial Day 2018 marked only the second time on record that the Twin Cities hit 100 degrees in May and experts say our recent hot weather could predict that we could expect hot and steamy summer weather. Doctors say knowing the signs and symptoms of heat related conditions can make the difference between life and death for you and your loved ones. To talk about the top most common summer hazards, we're very pleased to have with us Dr. Christy Russell Trusso, Assistant Medical Director of the Urgency room so thank you for being with yeah, us and I apologize you. I'm messing up your name there so thank you doctor thank you for having me you know I think one of the most common things that we see is dehydration and um, I don't know if people take it as serious what exactly happens with dehydration when it gets hot and humid and um, what can people be doing to prevent it and also treat it then if they have it yeah so dehydration happens in the body when our fluid output uh, it seeds what we can take in. So typically we'd have a normal thirst mechanism where as, we are, as the body loses fluid, we become thirsty, which prompts us to drink. When we become dehydrated, either we can't keep up because we're losing so much fluid either through sweat or if we're ill, vomiting or diarrhea. But in the summer, we worry more about the sweating and the, the output through that. Um, and our ability to keep up by taking in enough fluids. As we reach dehydration and becoming more and more hot, uh, sometimes we lose our thirst and sometimes we become nauseous or unable to take in those fluids. So those would be some of those early signs and symptoms? It, well, early signs is usually just really bad thirst and then some fatigue or headache mild nausea, as you become more severely dehydrated, you can have vomiting, confusion. and So it can be very serious. It can be very serious. You know, I think too that like maybe um, some of the elderly may not be able to feel or experience that dehydration as well, and maybe even the little ones. Yeah, so uh, people who are very young and very old tend to have a little less reserve. Um, in addition, elderly people don't tend to have the same drive to drink. As we age, we lose some of that thirst mechanism, so we, we tend to get behind more easily on our fluids. So when should they seek treatment, and what kind of treatment can they get? So at the urgency room, we certainly can evaluate for the full spectrum of dehydration. We offer medications for nausea and IV fluids if you've reached the point where you really can't take fluids by mouth anymore. Um, and we can certainly do a full exam to evaluate for your condition. That's crazy that you can't take it by mouth at some point then if it gets too bad. Sometimes you just lose too much and get too far behind. And any other ad, um, advice or tips for um, preventing, treating dehydration? So just recognizing when you're, when you're becoming overheated and hot, taking a break, sitting down in a cool spot, and just making sure you're taking plenty of, plenty of fluids. And any particular kind of fluids are better than others? Or? In most situations, uh, water is fine, but when you reach the point where you're doing really heavy exercise, really heavy, uh, really heavy prolonged outdoor work, then drinking a, a sports drink or electrolyte replacement solution would be a, would be a good idea. Sounds great. What about um, heat exhaustion and heat stroke? What's the difference between them, and, and yeah. what are the symptoms? So heat-related illness is on its is on its on a spectrum, so you can see anything from very mild heat cramps and fatigue all the way up to seizures and life-threatening neurologic conditions. Oh so the, the uh, heat exhaustion is where you have fatigue, dizziness, maybe some mild nausea and fatigue, but are able to rest, take fluids, and feel better within a couple of hours of getting out of the heat. Mm -hmm. Once you've progressed to heat stroke, that's a medical emergency that you need to seek uh, attention for right away. Anytime you or a loved one becomes confused, excessively sleepy, um, and certainly for any seizure activity, you should uh, see a medical provider immediately. And it has to be something, I was thinking, you know, like sometimes when you're out in, out in the, um, the sun in a long time, you start feeling a little sleepy or tired as well. So what, just more symptoms that you might be looking for in yourself or someone else? Yeah, so the feeling some, some mild fatigue where, you, where you're able to go in, sit down, rest, maybe have a cool beverage, and then feel better, those, those are some signs that your body's getting warm. Mm -hmm. But heat stroke is really when someone is difficult to, difficult to wake up, uh, confused, saying things that don't make any sense. 
It so seemed like when we were having those really hot temperatures in May then too that we were seeing um, the health officials putting out warnings about the air quality and stuff. What are those concerns as well? Yeah, as, as on a hot and humid day, the, the atmosphere traps the pollutants down near the surface. Um, so those particles are in the air and as we breathe them in they can be irritating to the lungs. This is another thing that is more significant for the very young and the very old, or people with lung disease. So people with asthma or uh, emphysema, COPD, they tend to be particularly affected and sensitive to, to those conditions. So to avoid the outdoors if you can then? Right, so know your triggers, avoid, avoid the outdoors if, you, if pollutants and, and allergens are a trouble for you. And at some point, when should they go to the urgency room or seek emergency care? So certainly any time that you're having shortness of breath and trouble okay. breathing, that's, that's a, a reason to see a doctor. What are some of the other things that you were mentioning that you're starting to see already with those early hot days in, in May that you see in the urgency room? Other related injuries? Yeah, so as, as, summer go, as summer comes out, all of us Minnesotans want to get outside and do our, our favorite activities. So we see a lot of sports-related injuries, um, anything from broken arms to sprained ankles. Um, we see lots of cuts and scrapes. Um, we do lots of stitches, uh, cuts and scrapes from swimming at the pool. Um, the the summer, summer is a great time to get outside and do all those activities but sometimes, sometimes you have to visit us if there's an accident. Well, even just mowing the yard or working in the garden and things like that, I think you can get cuts and scrapes and Absolutely. as well. So um, some of the other things that you might be seeing, we're, we haven't seen mosquitoes yet, but they're, we know that they're going to be they're out coming. there. And also tick-borne um, illnesses, we're seeing an, a rise of that here, not only in Minnesota, but in the upper Midwest as well. Yeah, so there are a lot of tick-related illnesses out there. The, uh, the tick-related illness that's most common and most well-known is Lyme disease. It's spread by the deer tick. And um, if they see a tick, to remove it or come to the urgency room and you guys can remove it? Oh, certainly we, so it's certainly possible to remove the tick at home if you aren't able to, we're happy to help you with that. Um, we recommend that if the tick has been embedded for 24 hours or graded, greater to seek uh, medical attention because those people would qualify for antibiotics to prevent the spread of Lyme disease. And um, talking about diseases too, it seems like in recent um, years we've heard of some of, especially when it's really prolonged hot um, days, some of the smaller ponds and things like that can breathe some of the um, waterborne kind of um, illnesses yeah. and things like that. So diarrhea type illnesses are the most common recreational uh, associated water dis waterborne disease. So main things there are try not to drink the water when you're swimming, which sometimes we do get water in our mouth. Um, don't go, don't go swimming if you have uh, stomach illness or diarrhea. Make sure that children are properly diapered and are taking frequent bathroom breaks. And that can be a, a concern as well. I mean, a serious issue if they do get exposed to some of these waterborne diseases. So there's, yeah, there's a variety of infections that can be spread through the water, but diarrheal illness is really the most common. That can be caused by virus or bacteria. The majority of that is, is a inconvenient but self-limited illness, but there are there are certainly risk of getting very ill from those illnesses. And again, th it's the same populations that are at high risk for the more invasive versions, and those are the young children and the elderly. And it seemed like too, I was hearing when we were getting those hot days in May that people were getting too much sun, and some were getting some sunburn already, and always a concern to making sure that they don't take in too much sun. Sunburn, sunburn is a very real risk, particularly early in the season as we, again, venture out. Um, we certainly want all, all patients to be protecting themselves from the sun, um, both to prevent sunburn and then the eventual risk for sun cancers. So applying a good SPF 30 or greater sunblock, wearing protective clothing such as a hat and lightweight lawn sleeve clothes. The peak time of the day to worry about sunburn is really the noon to four period. So um, those are particularly important during that time Still of the day. Still plenty of sun early in the morning and late in the, yeah. the day. Other final advice for our viewers on 
staying safe this summer. Yeah, I would just say be prepared be, uh, with all of your safety equipment and proper attire for whatever fun activity you're going to do. Make sure that bike helmets are readily available. If you're going out on a hike or in the woods, make sure you have the appropriate clothing. Lawn sleeves, lawn pants, pull your socks up over your pants to prevent bud bites and ticks. Well, really great advice, and it was nice to meet you and have you on the show today. So oh, thank thanks you. so much for nice having me. You, Teresa. And um, still ahead, we're going to tell you about a very special free wellness program this summer and how you can be a part of it. So stay with us. Chris Domine is a husband, father, and athlete because a kidney transplant gave him a second chance at life, made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Learn more and sign up as a donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Katie Barton, who lives in Oakdale, is a national health ambassador with the Special Olympics Minnesota. And thanks to a grant from Health Alina Health and support by local organizations, she has helped create a very cool summer program, an inclusive health and fitness program. And um, she joins us here today, so very pleased to have you with us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Jody, for having me on. So tell us about this inclusive um, health and fitness program. And why are you, first of all, I mean, before we get into details, why are you doing it? I'm, I'm high-functioning autistic, and I have struggled with obesity all my life. And it, I got to thinking how many other people like me struggle with it. And I wanted to create something that would help help them in, in the community learn to cope with it and, and, and be successful when they're what they need. And that would be total health because not only um, there's, um, you said struggle with obesity, but also I understand higher risk for heart disease, for diabetes and other health yes. issues as well, yep. cancer perhaps even too. Mm -hmm. So um, the program, a health and inclusive health and fitness program, what is that? The inclusive health and fitness program is made possible th thanks to that grant from Alina. Um, I've, I've, I, I've created two programs. One is a walking pro walking club on Wednesdays, from six to seven thirty at Kobe Lake in Woodbury. Wednesdays or Thursdays? Wednesdays. Okay. And then there's a SoFit program on Thursdays. That's where I was getting confused. Yes. Uh, from six to seven thirty at the YMCA in Woodbury that is open to people with intellectuals and without intellectual disabilities. SoFit was developed in Minnesota and is now being implemented throughout the, uh, globally. So SoFit is short for Special Olympics Fit? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a unified program, which means people with and without intellectual disabilities work together on their own health and wellness, and what it means to be human. Um, it's holistic. There are four pillars, physical, social, emotional, and nutritional health. If people want to get involved, they can either contact myself or Ben Schwartz. And, and it's offered free to yep. just about anybody, yep. right? It's free, to, it's free to any teen that wants to get The walking going. club, again, is for um, people with or without um, disabilities. Yes. And, and that would be great for everyone to get involved and to take part in it. So tell us a little bit about the walk, then. The walking program is... is 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 for people with like with people within without intellectual disabilities to come together and and to see for the community to see us in a new light and not be afraid of us. Mm -hmm. And then you can also use um, um, the, the Woodbury Thrives has a wellness challenge going on this yep. summer, so that's and also that's a, part yes. of it as well. Then and then um, the other or um, part of the program with the YMCA and Woodwinds Waste Wellness. Um, those, um, you have limited spots right. on that. Yeah. So how many spots do you still have? I have do? four spots left for SoFit. Oh, so, um, and they need to contact SoFit then? There to... are, a contact myself, or yet contact me to get signed up. Mm -hmm. And that runs all summer as well mm -hmm. then? And tell us some of the components of what's going to be going on with that between um, the YMCA and the Waste Wellness. Mm -hmm. and... Waste, I've heard it with Waste of Wellness. Um, they are going to do some kitchen stuff with us. We're, we're going to plan out a healthy meal beforehand, and then we're going to be, go to their kitchen and cook it. And then we're going to teach them some healthy snacks. That there, there's more to snacking than just pops and chips. Are there? <laughs> so we're here right now. Lots of fruits and vegetables and mm -hmm. lots of good healthy yeah. things. We have a chef coming up next that's going to talk about some of those things too as well. 
Um, and then um, the YMCA, then there's also some activities yeah. involved there the as well. The Y is graciously has, graciously has donated its space for us to meet, and then they are going to do some classes as well. Mm -hmm. um, they are going to let us also use their adaptive bicycles. So, and if they want more information on that, they can contact you then yes. yep. as well. And then um, this all falls under the umbrella of the Healthy Athletes and yep. the Special Olympics. Why don't you tell us about the Healthy, Athlete, healthy Athletes program. Healthy Athletes are, are designed to for people with intellectual disabilities. To, it takes the anxiety and the, the stigma out of it. Um, it helps us, it helps doctors and, and uh, professionals, pro health professionals? professionals and, and resident people in medical med school develop the relationship with us and and not be afraid when they get into their practice to, to be, have us be a part of their practice so that is all important for helping you guys be healthy right. as well then a, a healthy athlete a athlete who isn't healthy can't compete well and if you're competing, then you can be healthier as right. well. It's, yep. it's like a, it's a kind of a circle there. So, and then um, you're also involved with the um, Special Olympics and the Summer Games are coming up this month. Yep. Tell us about that. Uh, Special Olympics Summer Games are going to be held June 22nd to 24th at St. Thomas. It's free. Everyone's eight. Uh, there will be five different sports: basketball, aquatics, track and field. Uh, I think there's volleyball. And what's your specialty? What do you enjoy doing? I've kind of backed off on, I've kind of retired from sports and, and have gone to the leadership route. Good for you. Yeah, we need people like you to be in the leadership role. So, um, and then um, anyone can attend the, the summer games. And as I, as we were going to have someone from the summer games here from um, the uh, Special Olympics Minnesota, but busy with the game, so you're filling in. So thank you for yeah, doing that. We're gonna that. have a thousand athletes out there, so they have to get everything ready and going. And what a big job! <laughs> yeah. So final comments for people on, um, you know, what they should know about the programs that you're putting on, and 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 how it helps the whole community at large. Then Special Olympics n not only helps the athlete become a better community member, but it also helps the community support the athlete. And you can all live, everyone can live happy, yeah. happier and healthier then as yeah. well. Um, final comments about your programs, the wellness program. I think it's awesome that you're involved with this and, and providing these for other athletes like yourself. Being, being a person with intellectual disability, I've, I've struggled in the community and, and I've not been accepted some places. Um, I'm grateful to have Woodbury be a part of my, my mission. All right. Well, Katie Barton, thank you so much. Thank you. And good luck with all the programs, and I'm sure it's going to be very successful. For thank us. you. So thank you for being on our program. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And still ahead, we go back into the kitchen with the local chef and hear how what you eat can help you stay healthy. So stay with us. Cheru has no choice. She and millions like her walk miles a day for dirty water. Together, we can end their walk by providing clean water. Because when you just add water, you change a life. Learn more at worldvision.org. Now joining us is Chef Jeremy Reinecke. He's with the Kitchen Table with, it's a mouthful, with the Healthiest Ways to Wellness on the Woodwinds Health Campus. So you did it. Right Excellent. next to the hospital there. And you're here to talk about how we can stay healthy with the foods that we eat. So what are we going to be doing here? Absolutely. So first, we want to just really kind of focus on the different colors that we have out here in front of us. That's really important when we're looking at increasing the nutrients uh, and the nutrient density in our diet. So as you can see here, we've got in front of us a lot of different colors. Um, that's really, like I said, what we want to start incorporating. And so, now's a great time, too, with all the farmer's markets. It's an amazing time in Minnesota all the right fresh now. fruits Absolutely. and vegetables. Yeah. Definitely. Hit up those farmer's markets. Um, see what's local, what's fresh. Get your hands on those guys and, and kind of play with them in your kitchen. I was going to say, and, and um, I should, by um, disclosure, I have taken a couple of your cooking classes and well-being cooking classes, and they were great, and I learned a lot. And one of them was on how you can keep yourself healthy by 
um, eating foods that are anti-inflammatory that can reduce an, um, inflammation in your body. Absolutely, and that's really important. That's one thing that we can all benefit from actually, is keeping that in, uh, chronic inflammation in check and, and eating the foods that will help us do that. So again, we're looking at you know those bright colored things to keep our, our gut health in line. Um, we've got some ginger here we're gonna work with today, super for the gut health. We've got some bright blueberries, the bright green and our cucumbers here. These things go really, really well together and help um, control that inflammation. So, so what do we got? We're actually going to put together a really simple, easy smoothie today, and um, I'm really excited about it. And I think we'll probably just dig right in, yeah? Uh, yep. Okay, Sounds excellent. Good. So I've saved a couple pieces here to kind of demo as well. And um, we'll run through the ingredients uh, real quickly as well. We've got uh, beet juice here. I've got some cucumber water, um, our uh, seedless cucumber, or um, excuse me, some um, coconut water, sorry about that, seedless cucumbers, some blueberries, we've got some chia seeds for some um, added protein and healthy fats, we've got some turmeric here, some ginger, an avocado, and an apple. Wow, okay, that was a <laughs> lot of stuff. We saved a couple little things for us to prep, and I wanted to show you how to do a couple of those things, um, primarily because some people struggle with um, an avocado. So I want to show you real quickly, we're going to take this top off, just like that. We're going to then take our knife and kind of ride around the pit because inside an avocado we've got this pit right here. And then you make it than, look so easy. <laughs> it can be, it can be, right? A couple little tips. So rather than getting in here with a spoon and scooping that avocado pit out, just lay that guy down, tap your knife in there, and twist, and that guy will come Again, right out. Again, you make that look really yeah. easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of practice. Um, so now, how do we get it out of the, the skin here? We're just going to take it in uh, quarters, just like this. And then I'm going to peel this guy just like that. Super easy. Wow. That's going to go right into my blender. And Now, see, and I would be using like a little tiny paring knife or something, but yeah. taking his class, I've learned that you want to use the chef knife like that. Absolutely. We want to use essentially as few tools as possible, really. There's a ton of gadgets out there, and if you're a gadget collector, great. <laughs> go ahead and grab each one. But this guy right here, the chef knife, can do a lot of those same tasks for you. Um, the next piece here is our apple. I wanted to show you really easily how to kind of remove the core from this apple. You don't have to go around and peel it. You'll also notice that we're keeping the peel on a lot of these things here. A lot of the nutrients live in the peel of the apple in the skin of this cucumber here. So leave those guys on in this I have instance. a question about cleaning them. Um, is water just okay? Absolutely. Water's going to be really good. There's a lot of uh, different you know, commercial vegetable cleaners out there. And I'm not going to say that they're necessarily a bad thing, but now we're introducing you know, more chemicals and things into our food. Um, water is a great option as well. Okay. Super. Um, so we're going to take our apple here, we're going to cut it in half. I'm going to use that flat side and then we're going to just quarter it like this. And then again, they sell apple quarters and you can use it if you want. But all I'm going to do now is at an angle, nip out that core on each quarter. Just like that. Because you want to save as much of the, yeah, absolutely. the apple as possible. Keep as much of that apple as possible. Again, we're leaving the skin on here. We're going to use a blender, a high-powered Vitamix blender today, and it's going to break down everything for us without any issues at all. So we're going to take this guy, and we're going to go right into our blender just like this You know, and well. I love smoothies, but I always feel like they're so high in carbs and calories, so I try to I avoid them for the most part. Sure, absolutely. And really it comes down, and they can be, and it comes down to nutrient density, and we talk a lot about that in the classes that we teach as well. Well, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the energy that food gives us, the, the kcals or calories, versus the nutrients or the good stuff that they bring, uh, bring to the party as well. Um, so you can actually eat a relatively you know, high uh, uh, calorie uh, diet or high calorie food as long as it brings a lot of nutrients and a lot of good stuff with it. Okay. So that's what we really focus on. And then of course, Moderation is always key, right? Yes. We don't want to go crazy on anything. Well, yeah, some drinks are like huge. Absolutely, right? So an eight ounce, 12 ounce kind of smoothie thing is going to be is great. Which the small. It is the small, <laughs> absolutely. Living in the world of super sized yeah. things, right? Um, so in our blender now, we're going to add our beet juice. Be careful with this beet juice, of course. If it gets on anything, it's, it's going to stain. stain. Yep, so be really careful with that. We're going to add our coconut water here as well. Um, so we've got our liquid in here. We've got our um, avocado, our apple. We're going to go with our a cucumber. No, those smell great. They smell awesome, mm -hmm. don't they? Really, they bring a little bit of sweetness as well. We're gonna go with our blueberries, Love our ginger, this. and all I did was um, peel this guy and just kind of slice it up because oh, okay. don't ever, if you read a recipe and it says mince, finely mince it and then put it in the food processor, put it in the blender, why would you do that, right? Let the blender do the work, okay? okay? So just peel it. We're gonna go right in there with that guy. Then we're gonna go with our chia seeds. And if you don't have a high-powered blender, 
you might want to put those chia seeds in a uh, spice mill okay. or a coffee grinder first. Otherwise, really it might jam them. them. It could. Well, they just won't break down as well. Um, and then our last ingredient here is our turmeric, and we know it contains curcumin, which is um, a phenomenal, huge player in the world of anti-inflammation and, and gut health. So I try to sneak this into a lot of different things. It brings a little kind of earthiness to the party, um, but nothing that's really overpowering. Okay, so we've got. Can we make this recipe available to our viewers? Absolutely. Well? Yeah, okay. we'll get that up. We'll get okay. that up for you. Um, and then, so we've got all of our ingredients in here. We're going to go ahead and pop the top on. And I always like to start slow. If you have a variable speed uh, blender, start on low and then bring it up. And you want to spin it as. Um, kind of as little as possible, because that blender does generate heat in the form of friction, and we, we want to keep that to a minimum. So look at that. Guy. Wow, that looks great. Oh my gosh, can you smell that? Oh yeah, it oh. smells great too. So bright, beautiful color. Again, that beet juice is in there. Be careful, don't um, spill it, or it will make a huge mess. I've got my little glasses garnished right here, all ready for us with a little slice I of love, our cucumber. Like, cucumber and water. Yes, yeah. like infused. It's so freshing. It yeah, is beautiful, yep. So we're gonna go right in our glass with this guy, and I'm splattering just a little bit. But we've got that bright green, the bright red in our glass. Isn't that beautiful? It is beautiful. What do you think? Should we try it? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, How the one that? class I took, you had a mango smoothie that was yes, delicious that with was, bananas and... Yep, that was my anti-inflammatory smoothie. Well, to your health. Cheers. Thank Cheers. Mmm, that's really good. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Really good. Oh, there's a little bit of texture in there, and again, you could spin it a little bit no, longer I like it. to adjust that as well. But you know, and what I like about I don't typically like beets. Mm -hmm. Beets, you know, like as a whole beets. Whole beets, sure. but that tastes really, really it's good. Really nice. Beets do have a natural um, sugar in them, a natural um, sweet sweetener or sweetness. Mm -hmm. Um, so that kind of lends itself really well. Some people think that beet might be a little bit unusual to add to a, um, a uh, otherwise fruit smoothie, but I think it works out. I think it works out really well in this one. And so it's so important that what, what we are what we eat. And Absolutely. that's so important to get the, like the fresh fruits and vegetables in the part of a regular diet. Most then. definitely. And that's one of the things that um, we really work hard on imparting to our, our customers at um, Health East and at Ways to Wellness is that we need to eat a variety of foods. A lot of these um, kind of flash in the pan diets are very restrictive and therefore not very sustainable. So mm -hmm. we really. Um, uh, take a moderation approach and a, a broad variety to foods approach. Yeah, and at the top of the newscast of our program, we were talking about how, um, you know, eating healthy can also help you prevent getting cancer. Absolutely. And, and you do have some classes coming up this summer? We or? do, yes. We just put out um, our um, Q3 or quarter three publication, and that's going to be right here. It's available online at Health East, um dot org slash ways to wellness. I think we'll have that up shortly here. And some of the classes, basically, what are they? Yeah, what are you so offering? Um, the one that we are really proud of is our um, Cook Well series, and it's a four-part series. We meet once a week. And um, Which that's is the one, that you took. one of them yep. I had taken, that's, yes. That's the one that you took. And um, so we focus on our food philosophy in the first session. Um, we focus on knife skills as part of that series. We focus on proper cooking techniques. Um, and we also focus on then um, the anti-inflammatory piece, something that we can all benefit from. Well, Chef Jeremy, it's been a pleasure to have you with us. Thank, thank you. you. It's been a pleasure to be this here. This is great. Absolutely. And we'd like to thank you for joining us. Hope you'll join us next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone.